Now it is my favourite time of the week where Trudy joins us for a beauty chat and today she has the answers to the most asked beauty questions. Morning Trudy. Morning, how are we? Really good, lovely yes. to have you here. Thank so some you. questions that everybody asks. Let's start with this one. What's the best way to cover a cold sore and should I throw away my lipstick once I've used it? Yeah, look. It is, yes, get rid of it if you've applied to, applied it to your lips. But, you know, you can cover cold sores, um, and this is the worst time of the year for them. Mm. It's a bit of a layering technique, really. You need to use a slightly green concealer to knock back the red and then concealer over the top. And another tip that I always share is, you know those little eyeshadow applicators that are sponge that you always chuck out? Yes. Keep those, because they're really good for covering cold sores. Because they're damp, you don't get the cotton bud cotton in them. So they're a great way, and they soak up any moisture. And then... Look, you can feel a cold sore coming on, so if you've got a whole lot of gorgeous lipsticks that you don't want to have to chuck out, use a little orange stick and take some colour off the lipstick and use that rather than the bullet of the lipstick on the lip. Okay, because if you use the lipstick, what, you're just going to keep... Yeah, well, you can just keep reinfecting it, because unfortunately that virus is hard to get rid of. Yeah. Um, but you can also use isopropyl alcohol spray, like a, a cleansing spray on the lipsticks to kill any virus that might be on there, and obviously it's a no-no to share. You know, yeah. it's one thing you don't share, a beauty product. Don't be sharing your lipsticks. So, now this is the next question. Uh, can I mix products from all skincare ranges without compromising their effectiveness? Absolutely. Look, it's marketing hype. You know, beauty companies will kill me, probably shoot me to yeah. say this. But and that's your day's number, Trudy. Yeah, that's my job gone. <laughs> but you know what? You can, and I do. I mean, it's called cherry pricking in the business. And it's a good thing to shake your skin up and use a serum from one range and a moisturiser from another. It is my marketing hype to say you've got to use one range. Okay. Um, I I don't do it. I think you should mix things up. Just get the good things. Okay, yeah. from each range. Is it okay to pluck facial hairs? What is the best form of removal? It's actually not. A lot of people do. And what happens is generally you get a, a hair that's slightly dark and you freak out and think, oh my God, I'm growing yeah. a beard. I'm growing a beard. Get it out. <laughs> Single handedly with one hair. Yeah. Um, and what happens is it goes from sort of a soft vallus hair to a terminal hair. And once it's quite dark and wiry, it's really hard to get rid of. So cut them as close as you can to your skin. Use hair removal cream or sign up and have some IPL. It's actually quite reasonably priced and it does help to reduce hair growth. Unfortunately, with hormones, as you get older, it's hard to get rid of hair altogether. So it's just a, it's just a process of managing it, really. Okay, manage the hair. But don't pluck. Okay, don't pluck the facial hair. Can I use lip liner as an eyeliner and vice versa? Well, I do, um, and it depends on the colour, obviously. Red liner on your eyes can look interesting. But, um, <laughs> or black liner on your lips can look interesting, yeah, unless you're going for the goth thing. Yeah, exactly. But there are some really lovely nude brownie colours that suit lips and eyes, and it's actually quite nice to have that tonal makeup look at this time of the year because your skin's a bit paler. Um, I, again, sharpen the liner if particularly if you've got a cold sore, you don't want to be transferring it to the eye area. So sharpen the liners between use would be you know, my best advice. But yes, definitely, makeup's fun. Mm. Have fun with it. And that effectively cleans it, wouldn't it, if you're yeah. sharpening the liner? Sharpening getting it, it cleans bit off. it. Just get rid of it. Just give it one turn. You don't want to you know, sharpen it down to nothing. Yeah. Just give it one turn and um, yeah, it's fine. Excellent. You're full of all the information today. Oh. Next question. How often should I need to wash my makeup brushes? Look, I think... If you're, again, if you're sharing them, probably more often, but once a month's probably fine. A lot of those indelible makeups do tend to stick and make the, the bristles quite stiff because yeah. they've, they've got lots of, you know, long-acting pigments in them. But once a month's good, and a lot of people don't realise it, but you should treat your makeup brushes like your hair. You should shampoo and condition them. Really? Well, because they're hair. They're, mm. they're bristle hair. So if you actually just use a little bit of shampoo, rinse it out, condition the ends, rinse it out, and don't stand them up when you're drying because what happens is the water runs down into the wood and that's what makes the hairs fall out. It actually rots the hair. So what do you mean? Just lie them down? Lie them flat on a paper towel in the sun. The sun's great for brushes. It gets rid of bacteria. So, yeah, treat them the way you would treat your hair. See, all the information, I would never have known that. And how long does mascara actually last? Look, that's the fastest drying product there is, really, and it's because you're pumping it all the time. You're opening it up and pumping air into it to yeah. use it. So I reckon about three to five months, you can sort of start to tell. It starts to smell a bit funky. It smells funny, and also it doesn't separate your lashes very well. Have you ever tried a mascara and it goes a bit clumpy? Yeah. It doesn't stay wet for very long, so about three to five months. But it's the pumping of the air in the tube that stops it from, you know, being liquidy. It goes sort of more solid. Yeah, okay. And what about fragrance then? How do you make that last a bit longer? Fragrance, keep it out of direct sunlight. Um, 
a hot steamy bathroom is not great. You know, really, if you want all your fragrances out on your dressing table and the sun's pouring in all day, it's going to make them go off much quicker because basically okay. most of them are oil and alcohol base. Um, so usually about six months, 12 months if you keep them in a dark spot is fine. Okay, good to know. Mm. Hey Trudy, thank you so much. Oh, pleasure. Enlightening. Uh, and if you have any questions that you would like to ask Trudy, uh, that you'd like to put to her, she is the expert after all, then head to our Facebook page to, uh, to put them there and we will pass them on to Trudy. And if you want more from Trudy, you can go to her website, beautyeq.co.nz.